They created a world so unbelievably unique. Who would want to play that game? I mean, it takes itself way too seriously. With characters that are untraditional. They look like monsters, but they're not monsters. He's not a brainiac, he's not a jack of all trades, he's not a master anything, he's a goofbag. And ideas that are unconventional. It speaks about hope, it speaks about uh, changing for the better, it speaks about not being beaten down by the big guy. I was not responsible for his flatulence. Is that a nice way to say it? That's nasty. Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, was just the beginning for Oddworld. Their innovative ideas helped change the face of video games forever. This is their story of vision, chances, and an adorable little character named Abe. Before Oddworld was created, the future co-founders were growing up in two very different worlds of their own. I was really lucky. I came from parents that had money, and I had the perfect childhood, and I went to USC, and it was a dream childhood. My first memory is sitting in the back of a police car and watching the lights bounce off the houses. My mother married an ex-Marine Teamster. <laughs> you know, nothing against Teamsters, but I lived with them, so I have the right to say that. But what Lorne did have was a gift, and this gift meant everything. Art probably saved my life, because when I was in high school, I had just become a really bitter, negative, hostile person. Fate would then slowly begin merging these two lives together. While Sherry was working as an executive in computer animation, Lorne was earning his reputation as an accomplished art director. Then in 1991, while working at a special effects company, the businesswoman finally meets the artist. It was very clear that we were both really passionate about what we did. We both really wanted, you know, to create high standards. I thought that uh, for the first time, in Hollywood, I was meeting someone that was really direct. Sherry would cut right to the chase. So she would just go, no, that sucks, that's good, that's awful. Beyond their similarities lies something that fascinates Sherry. I wouldn't even know how to describe it, except to say that he truly, truly is an artist. That's really who Lorne is. He's an artist. They officially partner up, spending the next few years creating computer animation rides. But along the way, Lorne picks up a new passion and shares his true vision with Sherry. And he said, what we really need to do is we need to build video games. And I thought he was kidding. And I went, why would I want to build a video game? And she just wasn't making the connection. And I was going, it's an economic connection that we need to make the leap to, Sherry. See, here's the deal. This is the new medium. We could be the Cecil B. DeMille's of what's coming down the road. This is music videos in 1980. Thanks to Lorne's persistence, a healthy, brand new video game company is born, and its name is Oddworld. Sherry and Lorne pack up their lives, leave the comforts of Hollywood, and set up shop in sleepy San Luis Obispo. Let the games begin. All video games either had to be some sort of an established puzzle, established fighting game, established this and that. And there was a way to combine all these. Hello, follow me. Okay. And still put out this intoxicating game, this little world that would draw you in. Scott isn't the only top talent intrigued by this unknown world. I realized the moment I walked in the door, I'll do whatever it takes so that I could become a part of this whole organization. So we have two leaders that didn't just say, hey, let's form a company because it sounds good. They had the background and the knowledge to say, here's what the images are going to look like. This is what the world's going to look like. And these images aren't typical. There are no superheroes <laughs> or virtual babes. That's just wrong. Instead, there's the bizarre, the peculiar, and the odd. And the title for this odd game 
is going to be Soulstorm. It's not your cliche science fiction type stuff. They look like monsters, but they're not monsters. All of Oddworld's inhabitants possess unique physical needs and emotional quirks. But allow me to introduce you to some of the stars. These are the evil industrialists, known as the Gluckins. And every Oddworld needs good native inhabitants. Meet the Mudakins, a group maliciously trapped in slavery by the industrialists. What we always wanted was to create a character that people could really identify with. Not the character that we'd like to be, you know, the Superman. And that's exactly what they created. And his name? My name is Abe. Yes, Abe. The lovable, goofy character with stitches mysteriously sewn on his mouth. Abe's responsible for leading us through the game while simultaneously trying to save his own kind. Tough gig. He's not a brainiac, he's not a jack of all trades, he's not a master anything, he's a goof bag. But he's indicative of a much greater world that's out there. So now that we know what he looks like, what does he sound like? Who better to ask than the man behind the voice, creator Lauren Lanning. His voice had to be sort of the chump, you know, the guy you'd go, piss off, man, you know? So he'd, he'd be like, well, why would we do that, you know? Now that we have our lead, let's get to the story. Abe's mission is to save his fellow Madakins from becoming brunch to the industrialists. But first, he must save himself. Get me out of here! Along the way, Abe's journey is filled with relentless struggles and battles. People are attracted to Abe. He doesn't have this killing blow. He doesn't have this, this garish suit. He doesn't have uh, an ability to travel through time, and he doesn't know it all. No, but what he does know is that he's stacked with a great marketing team. They're responsible for changing the game's title from Soulstorm to Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. Oddworld's vision explodes onto the screen in the form of visually stunning CGI movies. I look at what our people create, and I just can't believe it. I mean, I'm just as stunned as I could be. You look at the train in Abe's Exodus, that thing looks like it works. When they design something here, it looks like it works. You know, the first time we saw the movie, hit the screen and match the game screen exactly. And you go, yes, you've never seen that before. Although Oddworld Abe's Odyssey is essentially an action game, it's built upon many beliefs that inspire Sherry and Lorne, with subtle and delicate messages like environmentalism, mysticism, and anti-commercialism. Nobody wants to be preached to. Uh, you get up on a platform and tell people how the world should be, and they'll walk away. My name is Elf. Hi, Elf. But if you can grab their attention with irony and humor, can I chat now? Then you've grabbed them. Now it's time to preview the game, and industry insiders are totally blown away. But Sherry and Lauren's concerns lie with gaming fans. How will they react to this very odd game? Who would want to play that game? I mean, it takes itself way too seriously. It's far too caught up in current events and the state of the problems with humanity. It's not what the culture that plays games is. We're going to live and die by our word. If the game fails, we will have no fingers to point to anybody but us. The concerns come to an abrupt halt when Oddworld Abe's Odyssey becomes a smash hit following its September 1997 release for PlayStation and PC. Our lovable little guy has been launched into stardom. Abe's the guy that in our hearts we identify with. He's the guy who we think we are. And because of that, that's why we care so much for him. Hello. Abe's human traits help us identify with him more easily. Like the fact that he, uh, you know, breaks wind. I was in a meeting. The most humble guy in the meeting, he made a joke. And we were talking about, like, what if Abe farts? Not at all. I was not responsible for his flatulence. Is that a nice way to say it? No. But when I saw it, I realized, okay, this makes him human and it's funny, and it's a cheap trick, but it's a cheap trick that works. Okay, so now we understand the history behind the gas. What's the mystery behind the stitches? 
For the first time ever, Lauren reveals the answer. When he was born, he was more of a crybaby. And so it was something that was done to him to help the situation. But it was before he was really awake enough, you know, conscious enough as a person, to really understand why he had had these. But it's something that he feels is a part of him, so he doesn't want to snip loose. Abe and his fellow inhabitants have beaten the odds and climbed to the top of the video game charts. When we come back, the mystery of the moon, the hamburger no-no, and... <laughs> Sherry McKenna and Lorne Lanning dominated the video game industry with Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. The 1997 release won more than 40 major industry awards and sold more than 2 million units worldwide. Well, there's not much time to celebrate. Oddworld's publisher asks for the impossible, compress the usual two-year-plus production cycle, and deliver a follow-up game in time for Christmas 98. Can Oddworld handle the pressure? It was hell, let me say. It was not fun. We did it in nine months. We got it done on time because that's what you're supposed to do. Deliver on time. We just had to prevail, and it was murder. With games to be made and deadlines to meet, the relentless businesswoman is adamant about providing a healthy work environment. I am absolutely a monster about the health thing. So if I see people coming in with junk food with a cheeseburger, I will absolutely take it and throw it away. Uh, Sherry said healthy people are... Uh, basically good, alive workers. And so she fronts the money for vitamins every week and has fruit baskets. And then, you know, you'll pull a desk drawer and there'll be the donuts. But don't tell her I said that. But she finds out. <laughs> With little time to play, work progresses on the second Odd World game, where some familiar inspirations are sneaking their way in. Basically, our games are about consumerism versus mysticism. Nicotines, sweeteners. We have to look at us as consumers and be responsible for that which we consume. But it speaks about hope. It speaks about uh, changing for the better. It speaks about not being beaten down by the big guy. Some of these very personal messages stem from Lauren's very real life, like paying homage to the 12-step program. I started going to Alcoholics Anonymous. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but my father was a reformed alcoholic. And I used to visit my father on, my week on the weekends with my brother. And if we wanted to see Dad, you know, this is what he had to do. So we went, too. I had my first brew. I have no idea the value that that had in my life because I think it's such an incredible organization. And I saw what it did for my father and saved his life and probably ours too. Against so many obstacles, Lauren and the other Oddworld inhabitants still managed to make the deadline. Oddworld, Abe's Exodus, is released in time for Christmas 98. And it's irresistible. And here's the lowdown. Abe must free the living Mudokans still enslaved by their captors, save the spirits of his dead Mudokan ancestors, and sabotage the evil cartel's businesses, including the Soulstorm Brewery. Got it? So what about the farts? Did they make it in? You know, it'd be funny. What if Abe possessed his fart? Stop I mean, <laughs> at that point, we couldn't do anything but that. Abe's behind yet another Game 1 secret. When Abe broke out of Rupture Farms, that was one of the first things he saw was this moon. And as he put it, in the face of the moon was my paw. And he puts his hand up there and it links up, and then his fate is really kicking in. But how did the paw get embedded in the moon? Well, like many movie mysteries, this one began in a not-so-mysterious way. It's all budget, right? And what can you do and how much time and how much money? But what got edited out is those... As he was escaping, there was supposed to be a meteor storm hitting that moon, slowly forming this hand, so that it would imply that there's these greater forces that are really behind him, that are trying to send him symbols. Now that we know the secrets, here are some magical movie moments. I'm a fan of the movies as well. I mean, I'm just 
as stunned as I could be. And their enthusiasm proves to be historical, coming to life on screen in more than 22 minutes of many movies. In 1999, they compose an animated short film from their movie game footage and submit it for an Academy Award. Would Abe actually get a chance to meet Oscar? And if he did, what in the world would he say? So we decided, why not? Our computer graphics, our movies, our cinematics in our games really are, are quite cool. And so we decided, let's submit it. Abe doesn't win the Oscar. So he ditches a career in movies and shifts his interest to music. Landing himself a lead role in a German dance band's video. This isn't something someone's going to watch once. It's going to be every time they click on the TV and sit back and go, oh, here is I a video. That's good. You kind of charge into it going, wow, this is something lots of people are going to see lots of times. The video becomes a huge hit, and Abe plants his spot as an international star. We interrupt this program. Coming up, Oddworld makes a decision that some fans say... I am screwed! And Abe gets a sidekick. Uh, he's a belcher. By the year 2000, Oddworld Inhabitants produced two successful releases that sold more than 4 million units worldwide. Their collection of odd characters were embraced by gamers everywhere. We did our games on the PSX for Sony, and they were great. They were really great supporters. We were very happy being with Sony. Yet that fall, Oddworld drops the bomb on their fans. News for you, Blue. Announcing they've agreed to create future versions of the Oddworld Quintology exclusively for Microsoft's upcoming Xbox. The Xbox is the content machine today. That machine is the machine that if creative minds are together, they can deliver better content on it. That's it. But fans are infuriated. When our fans found out that we had done that, we got more hate mail than you can even imagine. Somebody's really pissed off. Blasphemy it was. We, we had a feverish uh, upswing. I go to the web, and you can't help but read the web. And there'll be some people, like, you know, talking crazy talk. I am totally screwed! And, uh, man, that hurt. That hurt. It means they care that much. People believe so much in that universe. Can you imagine touching a human being so much to the point where they so believed in that character? They so identified with the world that we created. They so believed that Abe wouldn't do that. Abe wouldn't go there. Abe wouldn't react that way. For Oddworld, the changes are monumental. The crispness was kind of chilling. You, to, to get right up in the screen and kind of look for jagged lines or look for a time delay, you have your face kind of on the screen, just, you know, Abe's still there, no? And then your hair would fall out. Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, the third game from Oddworld, premieres along with the Xbox for Christmas 2001. My name is Munch. And Munch, the lonely yet ambitious Gabbit, makes his debut appearance. He was the last one, so he really embodies sort of loneliness and loss. But he had to be distinguishable in a different way. And he goes, I can't find anybody. You know, when he'd say things like that, They'd just be like, oh, you know, and that's what we're trying to do. Hit the heart, hit the heart, but in a twisted world. You've got a monoped with two hands and this huge head uh, who's aquatic, and yet he's kind of a land animal, too, and can speak, and he's got a radar on top of his head. You know, you have to feel for the guy. you got to like the guy, or at least I like the guy. Hey, what's happening? Hello, Abe. Hey, Munch. Uh, he's a belcher. <laughs> Great. We, we got our farter, and we got our belcher. Uh, Don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> but it is funny. Hey, that's nasty. I mean, Munch is funny. Uh, Munch is another 
clueless character. And it happened. That pulls your heartstrings because he's the last of his kind. He's a gavit. In Oddworld, Munch's Odyssey, Munch tries reaching the last of the Gabbit eggs. While Abe hunts for Mudokin eggs, which contain his unborn brothers. They must complete their quest before they're stopped and killed by the evil Vikers and Gluckins. Oddworld tackles yet another taboo issue by allowing Munch to occasionally use a wheelchair as his mode of transportation. Let's take something that we have an association with and let's change that. Let's look at that association, knock it apart, put Munch in it and make it a power-up. It's the best way to get around given what he has. Nothing wrong with that. So again, something for people to kind of look at and go, this guy's really cool, this guy's really goofy, this is fun. But not all of Munch's assists come from a set of wheels. He gains unnatural boosts of energy from power-ups. Oddworld's version of soft drinks. We go to a vending machine, we get caffeine. Well, <laughs> they go to a vending machine, they can run 50 times faster. And Lauren takes a well-deserved moment to reflect on the magic of Oddworld. I think when we got shadows to cast directionally, and the way that that looked in the lighting, and the way that that matched the characters, there were certain points, like when we'd be going through the testing, I'd be going, I'd be going, that, that looks good, that looks good. Okay, make it great. Blow people away, okay? The game looks great. In spite of the protests, Oddworld fans remain loyal and follow Abe to Xbox, picking up new fans along the way. Oddworld Munch's Odyssey becomes a worldwide hit. With three highly successful games, a string of awards, and fans around the globe, what will the Oddworld inhabitants come up with next? We'd like Oddworld to turn into a family event. It'll be like turning on The Simpsons. When you turn The Simpsons on, everyone sits down and watches. That's hilarious. Look! When you turn on Oddworld... Come on, Abe. We're right behind you. Right behind right you. Right behind you, you Abe. Okay. Here it will be a family sitting on the couch and going, Oh, Mike, did you see that? Whoa, that's too high for me. That's hilarious. That's our future. Guys, that is sweet. There's a lot of, I think, what has to define Oddworld is creativity. And the day that it's not defining that for the public, I think we've got major issues. We have to see that we're getting stale before our audience does. Naked mud wrestling. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know, because every time we see the production art that comes down the pipe, after a while we're like, wow, this is, this is nutty, this is great, how are we going to do this? I have no idea. I need a coffee. And then we actually do it. We're going to create games as we move into the future where people won't debate what's the future of entertainment. They'll be like, no, video games are going to override motion pictures. And we're going to hit that mark. And I'm not claiming anyone's hit it yet, and us either, but we will. They're going to be very surprised. Let me just say that. The next game that we're creating, I think, is going to be not what they expect. I probably shouldn't say anything more about it but that. And what's coming, and what people are going to be playing, it's just going to blow them away. It transcends what they think is possible. And it's not that far around the corner.